Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys more with the end game of the Inquisitor Righteous Fire build. Now, um, this character is probably closer to like 15 exalts now from when I started originally. And I'm kind of just going to go over some upgrades that I've done. So the biggest thing that I've dumped currency into uh, is going to be jewels. So uh, I have a Master of Fire here, which basically apply applies exposure. Now, I know a lot of people, especially newer players, are going to ask, why do you want exposure when you use Scorching Ray? Doesn't Scorching Ray already apply exposure? Why don't you just use that? Uh, Scorching Ray definitely does apply exposure at a much higher value as well. The problem is, if you're trying to map quickly, you're not really standing still shooting rares with your Scorching Ray. You kind of just want to zoom through. So this is a lot more um, kind of built around the more clear speed adjusted version. Also, it's nice when you're doing like things like Awakener where bosses are constantly jumping all over the place you don't have to like reapply your exposure with master of fire you're just near the target it has exposure now there's a really good interaction with master of fire um and the elemental mastery for exposure you inflict applies minus 18 so for one point you can turn your 10 minimum exposure or 10 maximum even uh into an 18 which is very very good there's also a fire mastery one over here which i believe is is basically just fire exposure you inflict applies an extra minus fine uh, fire res but you don't really need that at all um mainly because it does not work with the minimum um i don't know exactly how it works i'm guessing you have the 10 for master of fire then it tries to count the five so it goes to 15 but it sets you at an 18 minimum you don't really need that one also i just realized i don't have a jewel in for some reason what Somehow my jewels got taken out. Okay, so I also upgraded to uh, acquiring more jewels. So if you look here with my tree, basically what I did for this cluster is I went down here and removed this section. I removed my two-point jewels. Then I got my two-point jewels back via here and here. Um, and you can see I've spent about like 100C, maybe a little bit less uh, depending on the jewel, but max life and double multi and or max life one multi with burn damage. Um, so that's kind of where a big chunk of my money went and that's pretty much about it uh, I did end up getting some new boots, but they're really not very good They just have very high life and recovery, but no form of res really shitty movement speed uh, And I just wanted to go ahead and jump into a more end game map for you guys So I've got a t16 rolled here. Uh, I've also got it sextanted. So it's gonna be nice and then uh, I don't have the conquer on it because it's in Glen. So it's over here. Uh, I'll try to get you guys an awakener kill later uh, I did also adjust my flasks slightly, so um, I have switched over to the use when charges reach full. And what this does is, because all three of them have gained charges when you're hit, you basically have permanent flask up time. Uh, since I'm not running a setup right now for uh, a proper curse on hit, because I don't have a ring with flam on hit yet, I am running Witchfire Brew. It doesn't really do much for me because I, I so often find myself running like 60% reduced curse effect maps, so... This, I don't know, I'd probably use a Topaz Flask or even a Jade Flask, maybe? But Jade is only because I may switch to Shadow Stitch because uh, I don't really feel like setting up Tempered by War because even with, like, my current res, Tempered by War does not work. So I think I definitely may switch to a Shadow Stitch variant, uh, and I'll update you guys on that a little later. I must have okay, so let me go ahead and throw this in. Um, another one is I have switched to master of uh sorry since i got master of fire i don't run scorching ray anymore i am using a flame wall setup uh which is currently life tap flame wall control destruction le focus burn damage and a very low level swift affliction Oh yeah, I did also get very lucky, I lied. My character is actually quite a bit more than I originally uh, explained. I got lucky and double corrupted a 21-20 Vol Righteous Fire.
bit more my clearing is a it's a little sloppy i've been enjoying my uh my sunday i hope you guys are having a wonderful halloween as well can't remember the last time i actually like went out trick-or-treating i mean i'm so much older now plus corona i'm not gonna go out but uh high school i think when was the last time you guys went trick-or-treating pretty nice though i mean when you look at it now compared to kind of like what it was before once you get master of fire going your clear speed goes up so much so much more um just having that extra minus res uh, coupled with like the high base damage now of rf it, it, it feels very cozy Okay, that mob is like very mad. What is that guy? Right there, that guy. <laughs> that guy is uh that guy's pretty mad. Like a soul eater Veritania Archer. Alright, so that pretty much concludes that. I do want to go over a few more things that I have adjusted. So, uh, Skitterbots, I decided I was going to commit to Skitterbots. Uh, where did I put my Skitterbots? There we go. I decided to commit to my Skitterbots for now because, I mean, for 35% reservation, um, I went over here and down by here, it doesn't matter which Armor Master you do it on, but I went to Determination Mana Reservation Efficiency uh, to save Gem Room at the moment. And doing that, I put in an Unbound Ailments, and it makes my Skitterbots have like an extra 8 or 9% extra shock. When I was running the map there, you could see they had a 26% uh, shock threshold. So that was pretty good. I think that's probably one of the highest multipliers if you don't have shock um, for this reservation amount. So that was really interesting to me. I'm still running, you know, standard Molten Shell and During Cry. Uh, Infernal Cry, Flame Dash with Life Tap. I don't use this too often, but to be fair... Um, when I'm bossing, I really should be spamming it because I forgot. Um, I have removed the when you get hit, you apply ash to targets because, I mean, I've got the gem like open for Infernal Cry when you're doing bossing anyway. Since I don't have call to arms, it really doesn't hurt to just like tap my Infernal Cry all the time. Um, yeah, I think other than that, though, that's pretty much about it. So the next big things I want to do with my build, because it's a big common question I get asked is... I think I want to awaken our orb, a uh, plus one, plus one amulet, and I think I want to try to switch over to a shadow stitch variant because with my current res, I mean, like, my boots don't even have res on them, like, at all. My chest piece has, like, a, t like a bit of cold res, but it's not a big deal. Um, so with pretty easy, you know, gear flexibility, the second I get a decent pair of two-tone, I can just go full corrupt my gear and go shadow stitch, and I'm... I'm just curious to see, like, the effective health difference. Uh, I'm also curious to see if, like, a a Jade Flask of Reflexes or whatever it's called for percent evasion with just the base evasion of Shadow Stitch and then using a Jade Flask. I'm curious to see if I can get any form of meaningful evasion when I'm mapping, even if it's just, like, 20% chance, like, to evade. That's pretty big, right? Like, that's a big, big comparison from, like, zero. But doing that would make, make me not want to go on Wavering Stance at all, so... Definitely, you know, some food for thought, kind of like figuring out what we're doing next with the character. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time on the uh, on the video. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you guys like the update series, feel free to tap that like button, comment below. 
Also, another good combo, uh, something really basic, again, I was just really lazy with my flasks to go around, is using Forbidden Taste when you're very high Chaos Res, uh, and making it so when you take a Savage hit, it will replenish your life pretty much instantly. Uh, so you get hit, your life goes down, your ES goes down, your life is instantly back full. Um, so kind of, kind of something unique there. It's pretty nice. I really like the whole, like, use when charges reach full. That's a pretty sick combo going. I think Ziggy D made the video on, like, the budget mage blood. So anyway, catch you guys later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. See you guys all tomorrow.